Today we're painting some Chaos Legionnaires. Hello everyone, my name is Alan the Apathetic Fish and today, totally never seen before in this channel, like at all, seriously, I'm going to paint a Black Legion Legionnaire. But hey, they have a different name now. So one thing you might consider when you've painted one scheme for so long or so many times is that if you don't change stuff around and try new things, you won't learn anything new. And after many different methods I've tried, today this is the style I've landed on when painting my Legionnaires and I'm sure things will continue to change as I realize new and more fun ways to paint my plastic soldiers. In this video, I'm showing you how I painted this Butcher Legionnaire from the new Kill Team kit. Also, you can use this in 40K, but this one seems generic enough so that you can paint all Black Legion armor. What is different from this scheme is that it has a more volumetric way of highlighting and it's no longer the traditional Games Workshop way of painting. Painting this way has the advantage that it looks real and even black armor with this sort of highlighting looks like a painting from its main angle. Where it suffers is that from certain angles, the model may not look so interesting as we're using light to highlight from what painters call their golden angle and from a secondary angle from the back. I am concentrating more on placing the color in the correct areas and let it work for me as I am not willing to spend so much time in a single troop choice model for a game. If I wanted to compete, I would try harder, but we're trying to paint models fast and fast means like four hours a piece. I do dream having a finished army someday. This method would allow you to paint models like these and if that's something you think you might like to do, Come along and stay tuned. You might learn something or not, but let's do it anyway. To start with, I need my model to be primed. For that, I use Surface Primer Black from Vallejo. You can use any other primer you like. This is the one I use. For my Black Legion, I like the yellow gold look that Retributor Armor has, and this is going to be a very yellow gold. I'm going to use this one and put it on my palette, and I'm going to Add it onto the trim areas and I'm not being very careful. I'm just going to paint it on real quick as fast as I can, not worrying uh, to be neat uh, because we can fix that later. As I said, I like this yellow gold, but if you want, you want to do something more brass or more copper, you can do that. Um, this is my preferred color. Now I'm going to paint all of the silver details with black metal from scale 75. You can use Iron Warriors if you'd like or any other dark iron color you prefer. And this is going to be very carefully painted onto all of the places that are going to be silver, such as the straps, uh, the chains, or anything that you see that needs to be silver, just painted with this color. For the skin, I'm going to use a Vallejo color called Malefic Flesh and this is from a set that's called Malefic Flesh from Vallejo and these are pretty nice colors for vampiric kind of skin tones and this one is like Rackarth Flesh with a little bit of purple and I'm going to use this to paint all of the skin areas of this model which is just the face and uh, the head. Next I'm using Mephiston Red and with this color I'm going to paint uh, some details on the model. You can paint the cloth or any other details. You see that Black Legion uses this color prominently so uh, this is one of the tones that you need to use on your models.
next the leather I'm going to paint with Rhinox hide and with this I'm going to paint just a strap around the waist and if you have any other like uh, holsters or anything like that you can paint them with this color Finally, if there's any bone on your model, I'm going to use Walnut from Scale 75, but you can use Steel Legion Drab and just paint these areas carefully. Now that the model is coated in paint, I'm going to do some oil washes with some oil colors. For that, I recommend the Winton Oil Color from Windsor & Newton. And uh, I'm pretty new at this, but I'm going to use some plastic cups like these. And to dilute it, I'm going to use some Gamsol. This is a solvent or white spirits, mineral spirits, however it's called in your area. And I'm going to use this to add to the paint until it's wash consistency. For that, I'm using also a dropper, an eye dropper kind of thing. First, I'm using burnt umber. What I'm doing is adding a pea-sized drop into the cup and enough solvent to dilute it into a wash. These oil paints that I'm using are not necessarily the best for the job. I ha just had it on hand. Uh, the black that I'm going to use is water soluble as well. I don't think that helps. I think it needs to be regular oil paint, uh, not any fancy terms like that. If you're not comfortable doing oil washes, you can use the regular Citadel wash for these steps. Just use Agrax Earthshade and Nuln Oil. The reason I like oil washes instead is because they don't have any matte medium and the matte medium from the wash dulls down the metallic colors just a tiny bit. Uh, so to get around that and because this wash flows into the recesses more easily and doesn't pull on the surfaces uh, It kind of looks better even though sometimes it, it can leave a shiny kind of Finish uh, for the for but for the most part if you let it dry and it takes a long time to dry it looks pretty good I'm going to add this to all of the colors that I painted except for the silver I'm going to use it for the skin the gold and the red and I'm going to let it pull on, this re on those recesses and let it dry for a, a long time, like two or three hours. Next, I'm going to do the same thing, but with black, and I'm going to use this just on the silvers. And that's because I want them to look like oily, dark, and grimy. Uh, I want to use black instead of brown. Try using your synthetic brushes and not your expensive natural brushes. Because you, you will ruin them with the solvent. Even though it is uh, kind of mild and it doesn't do much to acrylic or anything else. It's not good for your costly brushes. Once that's dried, I'm going to use black, and for that I'm going to use Artist Black from Skill 75. I like this color very much, but you can use any black color you like. And this is going to be to clean up all of the black panels on the miniature. As it is, I think the model looks a little bit shiny, and I'm not sure if I didn't let it dry long enough. But make sure to let it dry long enough so you don't mix water and oil, because that might be terrible. Uh, but it turned out fine with me. Just let it dry enough and then um, apply these uh, black color to the panels to clean up all of the paint that got into it. At this point, the model looks ready for battle. If you want to use it like this, it looks very nice in my opinion. Uh, but I'm going to continue adding color and make it look a lot better.
What I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn off one of my lamps and I'm going to position the one I have on the very top of the model. That way I'm going to use the light as a guide for where I need to highlight on the black armor. And the first color I'm going to use for this highlight is going to be Abyssal Blue from Scale 75. Uh, an alternative from Citadel would be to use some Dark Reaper and maybe add a little bit of black so it's not so uh, light. I need it, We need it to be kind of darker and uh, this color is perfect. What I'm doing here is picking one angle for the model that's the best angle or gol golden angle where you can see most of the prominent features but it looks where it looks best and I'm positioning the light uh, on the top and a little bit towards to me at an angle to the model so you can see all of the highlights that light makes and then I'm going to use those um, reflections to paint them with this color it's not a lot of the area it's about 15 or 10 percent of the model black does that when you're painting black you don't want to paint a lot of highlights so that it reads as black and when you pick your angle you should try your best not to move the model or the light around so that the light doesn't change and you can see all of the highlights that you need to make and they don't disagree because if you move the model around and you start highlighting different angles of light it won't look right uh, so we're going to do this for the front and also I'm going to do it for the back. For the back I need to pick another angle and it'll normally be one completely opposite to the one that I used. Uh, but sometimes it can change depending on how the model is structured and if it looks good at a certain angle and stuff like that. Once you're done with that step, I'm going to use Caspian Blue and with this color I'm going to continue highlighting the previous blue. It's a little, a little bit of a big jump, uh, but it looks fine uh, once I finish all of the highlights. I'm going to add this color to my palette and I'm going to continue highlighting. Once I picked my angle and did a rough sketch of where the light is on the model, it's not necessary for me to keep using the light trick as I did before. But if you do it, you can get a better idea maybe and start highlighting these areas appropri appropriately. And what I'm basically doing is picking the highest, hottest spots or the ones that reflect the most. And I'm starting working my way to them because I'm going to use a couple more colors. And I'm going to cover maybe 50 or 30% of the previous highlight depending on the area. Depending, Sometimes black has an area that has a lot of shine because it's directly um, pointing to the light source. So maybe that area has a little bit more, maybe less. It's a little bit of uh, decisions you have to make. And uh, look at your model and see if you're using maybe too much highlight or too little. Uh, you can decide how much you want to highlight it but basically I'm just following my previous sketch and I'm adding a little bit of this highlight and you can see it starts to look very good uh, but this is not finished Next I'm going to use Bering Blue still from scale 75 and this is the next level of brightness that I'm going to use in this model. We still have another one which is going to be just touches. This one is just 2-3% to of the area just small enough so that it fits inside the previous one and it lets the other two show. And as you can see here I'm just working the highlight uh, bringing it up to almost white because we need that contrast it looks very good but black doesn't need too much highlight it's just small areas here and there
And finally, I'm going to use Arctic Blue. And this is the brightest blue that I'm going to use, almost white. And this is going to really sell the illusion of a bright highlight on the black. And this color is just light touches here and there, and they might seem a little too much. But uh, in my opinion, this is the color, the most important color that's really going to sell the illusion and it's going to make the spots very bright. And in comparison to the layers, if they're a little bit too big, uh, this is going to make them look not so, um, not so bright in comparison. Now that we're happy with the armor, we're mostly out of the woods. Now comes the skin, and for that I'm going to use some pale flesh, and I'm going to put it besides my malefic flesh, and I'm going to mix them up in mostly 50-50%. Just find a color in between those two, and I'm going to start highlighting the skin. If you don't know which areas to highlight, you can use the same light trick that I use on the armor, but in the skin. And whenever you, whatever you see light hitting on top of the model, just highlight those areas. That's going to make it a lot easier. But if you know where to highlight, you can use your artistic skills. Next, I'm going to use a little bit more pale flesh and add it to our mixture to find even a brighter color in between those two. And with this one, I'm going to continue highlighting it in just a smaller area uh, so that it comes brighter and brighter. Now I'm going to use directly pale flesh and this one I'm going to use it on the brightest areas of the skin, the brow, uh, the reflections on the head and things like that. Just add a little bit of this and uh, we're going to continue highlighting. We're not done yet. I'm going to use a little bit of Mephiston Red. I'm just going to use some of this in the palette and thin it down very, very thin, just like that. And I'm going to add it to the face on the area of the eyes, uh, the cheekbones and the nose so that it gives a little life to this very pale flesh. We don't want it to be completely vampiric. We just want it to ha have a little bit of warmth. And with this color, we're going to give it that. Don't let it pull like it did in that previous take, but uh, to finish it up, I'm going to use some highlight skin. And with this, it's just dots here and there on the brightest areas where the previous wash may have toned it down and also on the top of the head if you want. Next, I'm going to use some purple shadow and I'm going to add this to the skin on the darkest areas. Uh, I need to thin it down to a consistency of um, a little bit of a thick wash, but I'm going to just use it on these areas, on the darkest areas of the skin where you see shadow. Next, I'm moving on to the bone, and for that, I'm going to use Iroko 
from scale 75 and with this color I'm going to start highlighting all of the teeth or bone areas on your models which many uh, legionaries have. To finish the bone I'm going to use a little bit of Thar Brown and this is going to go towards the brightest areas and the tips of the bone points and that's going to be it for the bone. Next I'm going to highlight the reds and for that I'm going to use Aldebaran Red from scale 75 and uh, if you see an area that is not necessary to highlight if you're trying to speed paint just pick the most prominent areas and don't highlight everything but in this case I'm going to use uh, I'm going to highlight every area as I can and for that I'm going to use this and just add it on the most brightest parts. And to finish the highlight, I'm going to use some Mars Orange. These scale 75 colors need a very good shaking to work well. So I would recommend using some steel mixer balls to add to your pot, to your bottles. And also if you have a vortex mixer, that helps a lot so that, so that you don't tire your arms shaking these paints. To highlight the browns, I'm going to use some orange leather from scale 75 and just add some edge highlights here and there and places where you see reflections of light and just very quickly just to give it a small highlight. To finish the silvers, I'm going to use some heavy metal. This is the paint from scale 75 and I'm going to use this just in the most reflective parts of the silver. You can use, you can use the same trick uh, with the light so that you can find those areas easily and you don't need a lot of work to make silver look nice as long as you have that wash and just these tiny highlights uh, it's going to look great. To highlight the gold I'm going to use a couple colors and I'm going to start with Elven Gold and this is a very bright gold highlight similar to Auric Armor Gold and this is going to go on all of the areas that mostly reflect the light on the gold and you can use the light trick again if you want uh, just pick those areas wisely and uh, leave the rest as it is. To finish I'm going to use some Moonstone Alchemy and this is like adding silver to the previous color pretty much and I'm going to use this on the very brightest parts of the gold uh, to tone down the brightness of that yellow and to give it an extra highlight and this is going to make it look a little bit more real for me. It's subtle but it looks good.
And as you can see, this is the finished model. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed, please give me a like as this helps to support the channel. Comment on this video and share it with your friends that might want to watch it. You can also follow me on Instagram, Facebook and support me on Patreon. And feel free to ask any questions or make any suggestions in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.